When I was 13, all the way to 15, I thought the world was out to get me. If you've known me at all, you'll know that this was the start of me becoming emo. At this time, I had a very specific content taste. If it wasn't emo and edgy or quirky, I didn't like it. And one creator stood out to me the most, that being emo content creator on YouTube known as Crank That Frank, whose real identity is Frank Goya. For those unaware, Crank That Frank made emo content. As previously stated, he would do blind song reactions, which wouldn't fly today, emo quizzes made by fans, and quote-unquote emo bands on crack reaction videos, which were essentially compilations of emo band members being funny in a try-not-to-laugh format. In 2017, as far as I was aware at least, Frank was engaged to his fiance at- <laughs> I never said her name right- Evangeline De Demuro, who most often went by Eva. She also had a YouTube channel for her makeup tutorials and get ready with me videos. He said many times that he had been in a band, but that they had broken up because one band member or another was a jerk. In about 2019, Frank released his own song, titled Drowning, created with another artist from the band Makeout, Tyler Young, which was a banger. I listened to it for a long time after I stopped watching Frank, which did correlate with the aftermath of when his song was released. He said at the time that he would like to keep making music, and I specifically remember him saying something along the lines of, I love emo music, it's my go-to stuff, but screamo is where I perform best. And the release video from behind the scenes was when I stopped watching. There was one video that had specifically caught my eye on my recommendation years later, and that was a drama with Crank That Frank, wild because I had never seen one before, and I thought he was a tame creator. Turns out, he is, and it was just petty drama. But it got me to dive back in and wonder, Whatever happened to Crank That Frank? Doing some surface level research, Frank has all of his YouTube videos now deleted as well as his Twitter. Now I don't use Instagram, for all I know he's still active there, but I won't be checking. Frank's YouTube channel now only has videos for a band named Vantavoid, which, and it's been performed with his co-creator of his song Drowning, Tyler Young. Doing basic research a little further, all you find on Frank is Vantavoid. If it isn't Vantavoid, it isn't Crank That Frank. A basic search in a news section of not the band, but Crank That Frank. The first article is from Alternative Press, in which the author Alyssa Quiles? Quiles? asks, Like your previous releases, Burn and Outcast and Bloodline follows themes of drug addiction and the struggles that come with it. They're all very personal. Has it ever been difficult to share your life like that to audiences? Have you ever feared sharing too many personal struggles? This is the only point in the interview in which Frank responds. He starts off by saying, Towards the end of when I was making YouTube videos, I essentially got to a point where I was hiding behind an exaggerated version of myself. I was in so much pain behind the scenes, and I didn't want to show it to anyone. He continues by saying that making music with Tyler has helped him and it's allowed him to cope immensely. Besides that, there isn't much on Frank saying anything. Most other articles say that they mention him or Vanta Void in their descriptions and previews, but he nor the band isn't in the article. There are only three pages of results for this man in the news section, and only one of them isn't some silly tweet he posted or something he's slightly related to in some way. And it's even more disappointing doing the same for Vanta Void. There's only nine results. Frank's Wikitubia page doesn't have much either, which is really disappointing. For the almost cult-like following he had, there really isn't much to find on him. In the section Hiatus and Vantavoid, it is described how Frank had announced a hiatus on May 26th of 2020, and had stated that he would be back on June 5th, 2020. Due to the death of George Floyd at this time, however, he didn't feel comfortable coming back. It's been almost two years since his YouTube has seen any content that is Crank That Frank content and not Vantavoid. So much of Frank Goya has disappeared on the internet. While I've written this script out, I've kind of felt for Frank. I'm no influencer myself, clearly, but being online is tiring. I can't even be online so often and not even be myself while doing it. Crank That Frank had a dedicated audience. For a good while, I was there in that audience, and in a way, you could say I still am. If Frank decided to come back to the internet, I'd watch his videos again. Just we were watching uploads of videos like Crank That Frank featuring Palais Royale gives me such a massive sense of nostalgia. At the same time, I don't blame the man for his decision to leave. Everyone has their limits, and Frank met his, and made an extremely tough decision and respectable choice. Sure, I miss the funny emo content, but I can live off of other content and re-uploads. But Frank Goya will always have a special place in my heart because he massively shaped the young emo woman I am today. Just off the script here, Crank That Frank is a serious inspiration to me. He is a big reason I wanted to listen to emo music um, and really embrace 
myself, I guess you could say. I always wanted to go to one of his tours, but I was 15, didn't have a job. Um, he really pushed me to want to be a better person, to be a funnier, um, more happy person. Thank you so much for watching.